All right, welcome back. Episode 69 of the Young Old Heads podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Tommy, aka TV Sports Cards, and I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Max, aka Cards Max, aka Cards Max, debut patch 69 edition. Max, how you doing? I'm doing great. We all know the number 69 means it's good to try new things. It is o'clock, o'clock edition. If you look at your time right now, you can see that it's o'clock, o'clock. And Tommy is ready to go into this podcast with vigor. Yes. Uh, I apologize for skipping last week. Uh, I had to go to a work conference in the middle of the week and just had too much shit going on. So uh, that leaves me and Max a lot to talk about, including the fact that someone bought a Kettle Marte taco fractor for 300 bucks earlier this season and now they're going to cash in on fifteen thousand dollars in taco bell max how were you watching uh i was a little upset that the the tv announcers did not mention the taco fractors when uh, kettle Marte stole that base but uh did you see the sales i saw word of the sales it's not something that i was closely monitoring but i am cognizant of the sales well, there there have been three sales of Kettle Marte Taco Fractors on eBay. Uh, shout out our friend Don at the show and me who tweeted these. Uh, one sold August 18th for $297. One sold September 10th for $310. And then one sold October 25th, th- uh, two days before the World Series, for $1,000. So all three of those people are probably feeling pretty good about themselves unless they don't like Taco Bell, I would be interested to see, though, Max, of any of these transact post, you know, get the confirmation that it's Kettle Marte who will be able to get someone $15,000. What is $15,000 in Taco Bell in eBay money? Are you saying what $15,000 in Taco Bell gift cards means to me? Because to me, it means absolutely nothing. They make an inferior food cuisine product. And I've talked about this before. I'd rather be stacking burritos than stacking tacos. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I saw your Adolis Garcia flip flip God moment. Um, have you been? Well, you also have the Josh Young one hundred and one Max. Give let's give a World Series preview of your dealing right now. What what are some cards that you're? Who are you rooting for right now? Based on I'm, who I'm rooting exclusively for Josh Young and Josh Young only. Whenever I watch his at bat, I'm glued to my television screen because I do watch baseball to our our haters that will say otherwise. Um, I remember seeing the Corey Seager home run to tie it and the Adolis Garcia um, walk off to win it. And I'm thinking, man, they are pronouncing Josh Young's name. (laughs) Well, Max, can you tell the people what's going on, why you're reading for Josh Young so I can clip this and promote your auction? Well, my good friend Jason Dardick had an itch to scratch, and that itch to scratch was for sealed WNBA prism cases. And he texted me, I think he texted me a few weeks ago. He's like, yo, buy my cards right now. And it was a very easy deal. I gave me cards, and I'm like, I shot him a number. He accepted, bing, bang, boom. In that lot was the Josh Young one of one uh, platinum auto, which I know is a fun card, rookie auto. Um, there's actually a little bit of lore, which I think is interesting. I mean, um, I know the platinum relic one of one from like that 1988 subset also did a thousand dollars. So I'm thinking it's worth a little bit more than that. As of now, the listing is sitting at $501 and I'm on the edge of my seat because I never auction anything ever. What do you think? What do you think the ceiling is for it? Maybe like if I had to guess, I mean, I threw it up at 2,500 bin just because I'm thinking 2.5 X the relic. So like in theory, that's the ceiling. I think it ends probably somewhere in the thousand to $2,000 range. If I had to guess and it's not. Wait, what's the level that you're going to be happy though? What's the level I'm going to be happy with? Yeah. Like oh, how much, right. what would be, what number would you be like? What's the line where you're like happy versus unhappy? Like I, I think fifteen hundred. Okay. I don't, I don't know if that's greedy, but like I feel like if it's like a little, it needs to be a little bit juiced up, juiced up higher than the relic. That's my opinion. I agree. I agree. Well, everyone who's watching the World Series, make sure to be rooting exclusively for Josh Jung to get stats and rack them up. Uh, did you have any other good playoff for World Series flips, Max, on eBay? Like, have anyone been selling a lot 
that's been sitting on your store um, for a while. I know Corbin Carroll has been moving a ton, but I had one card of him and it sold, I want to say, in the divisional series. So now I'm Corbin Carroll-less. Um, I got two rookies back from PSA, it, both Topps Chrome Orange Refractors out of 25. One of Jordan Walker, which nined, and the other of Gunnar Henderson, which PSA 10. And a little bummed that obviously the Orioles didn't make it this far. I didn't have a bunch of Adley and Gunner, but I did $40 the card expecting it to uh, be back for the Orioles to be making the World Series run. And they got out rather early. So that's that what gun- we were looking for. That Gunner Henderson PSA 10 orange is pretty nasty. Yeah, it's like the orange on orange color. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Well, Max, there's other there's other baseball card news as always. Um, they they officially announced the first release of the MLB debut patches that we talked about way back at the beginning of the season. Okay. Um, so, Topps Chrome update: any anyone basically who debuted this year and then also had rookie cards this year is going to be in that set, right? That's kind of what I'm getting. I think that is correct. So, like, guys that debuted this year but aren't going to have rookie cards until next year, they'll have all that those patches in next year's probably Topps Chrome product, Max. I guess they didn't say. But. Or maybe they just continue it with update. And, they like, Volpe debuted on opening day. He's still going to have his update patch. Yeah, but, like, guys, like, let's say, I don't know, like Marco Luciano of like the Giants. Yeah, Marco Luciano, you're a Giants bias is showing. No, no, I'm saying that guys like that where they debuted this year, but they got the call up designation, like yeah. they're gonna be they're probably next year. Year. Oh, nice, Max. Nice. I turned off my do not disturb just for you and I turn it back on just for you. Holding <laughs> the gunner in my hand, by the way. This card is sick. Nasty card. And I love that card because of how dirty his uni is. Anytime that someone gets their rookie card and they have a dirty uniform in the card, that's pretty nasty. Yeah. Tommy um, says nasty. Nasty. Um, but Max have you heard any bounties or anything out for these one of one MLB debut patch cards? I haven't seen anything really. I haven't, and I still have PTSD from the word bounty. Yeah, but we, we try now to... disclose. You haven't actually told. No, us because it's still on the card. I will. I will disclose once everything's done. I mean, the people that know know, but that word stings. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but Max, you're going to Dallas next week, right? Did you go to any card shows the last couple weekends? We missed last weekend. So last weekend, I went to the Newport Richie show. I think it's Newport Richie. I don't want to malign a show and then get their name wrong. But um, one of the worst shows I've been in, been to. The something that I'm recognizing more and more is that I was so spoiled having shows on the Northeast every single weekend being within a two hour radius and it being just easy. Now it's like you can have shows maybe an hour, maybe 90 minutes, maybe two hours away, and they're going to be subpar. So last weekend was about two hours away. Probably the worst show I've ever been to. I bought zero cards. Again, shows are different for person to person. It's just, there's only a certain amount quantity of vendors that are in the Southwest Florida area. And it's just not a very card heavy area to begin with. So you have your contacts behind the table and it's even fewer than I can describe for other regions. Uh, That being said, like I had a, there was a show set for today and Friday um, in Tampa and I'm thinking, okay, it's an hour to drive. If I split a table with a buddy, then that's like 65 bucks each, give or take. And then it's, I have now that I'm not in New York anymore. I have to factor before I was factoring tolls which is fine, no biggie. Now I'm factoring, okay, this is $20 in gas round trip because things are farther from each other. And I'm like, this is, this is a thing in other parts of the country. Places are far from each other. So it's like $20 in gas, so $65 a table. Cause, and then it's like, if you're doing the tabling, you're just relying on walk-ups, which is fine. But it's like, do I want to put in essentially $100 because I think I'm going to profit more in walk-ups? Sure, I can sell some of my cards. Sure, I can buy some things from the dealers. But when I know it's the same dealers every time, it definitely lowers the enthusiasm. So you uh, literally bought zero cards when you went to a card show? Correct. I've never done that. Have you done that before? Not in a very long time. Damn. That's sad. But there is a card, local card show tomorrow. Southwest Florida. I think it's n- North Fort Myers. Dude, my Florida geography is 
horrid. Same. I have no concept of where anything is. I just know there's a lot of ports and forts, but I think Fort Myers. I think it's Fort Myers, and that's not a bad show. Like, it is an average local show for a show that is not in the Northeast, and I enjoy buying there. Like, I, yeah. it, it, it's like 90 minutes away, and I'm consistently, like, satisfied. It is a Sunday show. So what uh, what are you buying in anticipation of Dallas? I know that that's always a classic – you know, high yeah. volume, high liquidity event for you. What do you? Yeah, what do you uh, I wish I wish I knew the answer because I'm right now in like a little buying puddle myself. I mean, most people know how I operate. Sure, like if you sell anything to me at eighty percent, I'll probably buy it. But it's a doggy dog world, and unless you're a master advertiser, then you're not getting those leads. And for me, I've always, as, as my chemistry background has always shown. I always view it as a Le Chatelier equilibrium of between money and opportunity. And right now, and usually I feel the opportunity to buy at good deals is way harder to find than the excess money that you can throw at it. Maybe that's just me being frugal. I don't know. But we're in a conundrum where the product, I, I mean, I don't want to lament Tops and Panini, but the products right now that are coming out suck. It's like it's for football and basketball. It's, mosaic it's like mosaic had that power in 2019 but now it's like no one wants the razzle dazzle case hit. no one wants the sub the tier two stained glass because the tier one stained glass is in prism and always will be it makes me and it's so print printed so highly i don't really want to touch it right now contenders optic and bowman baseball are nice but i still feel like from the grading standpoint, I still feel like it's a little too volatile right now to want to touch. So those are the only good products from a grading standpoint. Updates out, which is cool. But again, that was just this past month. And from a season standpoint, we're at baseball offseason for 28 teams, which isn't a bad thing. But you have to wait for that to deflate a little bit. And now we're at NBA and NFL tip off and pre or excuse me week eight of nfl tip off of nba i have a lot of basketball and football which is guess a good problem to have so to answer your question i am looking forward to dallas because i expect it to be a selling show for me which is not common so i know the people love your basketball prospecting max the nba just started i'm extremely hyped about chris paul and the warriors even though i've been a notorious chris Paul hater i think the fit's great i'm excited about it um but i also am excited for your Benedict Matherins to go up in value and your Shet Holmgrens to pop off and your Josh Giddy downtowns, Max. Have you have you had any big sales on eBay or anything from those so, NBA cards you've been holding? Um, big sales on eBay. I'll check into in a moment, but I don't want to forget the the Josh Giddy downtowns because breaking or at least breaking news as of like three weeks ago, I did move one of them. I own now only own two Josh Giddy downtowns and no longer three. Oh. And I moved my PSA 10. So I don't know whether to think that was the easiest to move or because it, people like PSA 10s or the hardest to move because it would have been the most expensive of the three. I think Josh Giddy, if I recall correctly, scored two points last night. Not a sports analysis podcast. But we ride the mountains and we ride the Twin Peaks. Episode 69. Episode 69. Uh, are, you're not really transacting much NFL. I feel like this is kind of like the worst time to be holding NFL cards is like a quarter of the way through the season, right? I would say so. I think there's definitely a reactionary element to it. And as a fantasy football player that has disaffiliated from Giants fan, from New York Giants fandom for about five or five or six years now, all of the QBs, like obviously the NFL is a very quarterback driven market, but no quarterback is playing spectacular. Lamar Jackson had a good game last week. Josh Allen is probably in the favorite for MVP. Mahomes had a slowish start by hit standards and now is going stronger a little bit. Of course, what I like I like to tell some of my card adjacent friends, I'd really want to get into cards, but are on the reactionary side. Like, oh, what quarterback do I buy? Oh, I want to buy two. And I'm like, no, don't buy two. It's like, no, Mahomes won a Super Bowl and his prices did not change. This stuff is being baked in. Jalen Hurts is an MVP contention. His prices have not changed because they've gone up 250% the past year. They're not going to change. So 
my takeaway, my point from that is that most quarterbacks are starting slow or at their own standards relative to them. And not many quarterbacks are exceeding their own standards. So reflecting that to the card market, not many quarterbacks have really gone up in price. Yeah. I feel like NFL, the QB market is like the one that's hit the hardest by the peaks of 2020 and 2021. Cause it's like these people all bought in at the, so many people are owning NFL quarterback cards that were bought in at the peak. You are holding up two Joe Burrow zebra die cuts that are just brutal to be owning right now, Max. Yeah. These are two fun cards. I mean, I will say these are very tough gems. So I'm do happy that I have them. I'll probably at this rate be holding them for a while. But I think I've said the story with that before. I bought a PSA 9. I cracked it. I sent it back in. And I think it PSA 9 again. And then I Beckett it. And it Beckett 9.5 min gemmed. And then there was a Beckett 9 that was 0.5 away from a 9.5. I sent it to Beckett 9. It RCR 9.5. And then I got it for encapsulation. So now I own two of the exact same card with almost the exact same subgrades. And the zebra stripes on the Joe Burrow tiger stripes, they are cool, man. Tiger, stri- tiger stripe select, underrated, but also overrated. I go back and forth. You uh, you have notoriously been pretty pro-animal parallels. Um, I'm, I'm, and now you are pro the bat 101s. I didn't even know they had the Halloween 101s in Top's update, Max, until you tweeted out that one card. Yeah. No, I mean, I thought that was like surprise news that they were including them in Top's update. And they have various other parallels too i think they had like sequentially numbered halloween parallels um it's weird seeing tops holiday release this early different product than tops update tops holiday which is the christmas product is i think already released or is very close to being in hand something no like doubt. that people it's are cool. posting on ebay and in classic fashion everyone always thinks their top tops holiday sp should go for like as a much million as and a half dollars yeah exactly Tommy, I, mean, I know um you were out of the hobby during Acuna bat down mania in 2019. See, this is how you know I know ball and that I'm a real one. I, I was here pre Gary V, not by much, just by an organic desire to have a Luis Severino autograph in a man cave. Organic desire. But when Ronald Ronald or Ronald Acuna Jr. had his original flirtation, I like flirtations, with his 40 40 season in 2019. That's when the bat down went from, okay, this is just a one per every case or a few for every case short print. I think it's one for every case too. Okay, people loved the bat down image. And Tommy, knowing ball trivia quiz, which three cards have the bat down image? Uh, well, obviously the was it update SP or is it a series two SP? Uh, series two SP. It's a series yeah, two all right. I, that's what I would have guessed. That's what I would have guessed. I know yeah. his tops holiday has the same image. Yes. And then is it Sapphire? It's Sapphire. Good. You know ball. Wow. Right? Wow. You thought I didn't know ball. No, I thought you did know ball just to demonstrate to the no, what do you mean? I, well, I might also, I coaxed it with Tops Holiday. That was my point. Fair enough. Fair enough. I also have a sneaky, I think that like his 2019 Tops Chrome SP is like basically the same thing, right? It's like it's one. You know what I'm talking about? You owned yeah, one of those recently. Are you talking about the mealing? Yeah. Yeah, I know ball. See, two for two. Or one for yeah. one for one each way. But people went, point being, the Sapphire card was way out of reach for so many people and only 250 cards printed. Also, fun fact, that's the only one outside of the Holiday Metallic that has parallels that has the Red Sapphire and the Super Fractor, which are even harder to find. But the top, because people were getting price out of the bat down, the 698 original, it like made his holiday like soar in price. Like the metallic holiday snowflake of the Acuna bat down was like a hundred. I want to say it was like a hundred to $125 card. And even like the mediocre copies were like 75 bucks. What's like, what's the all time most iconic tops holiday card. That one, other than that one, other than that one, probably that Um, I'm going to say, okay. Runner up is, at least the two that immediately come to mind, which probably demonstrates the relevance, is the 
Um, Fernando Tatis, 2019 holiday. 2019 holiday was cool because they had the Christmas wreath borders and not just the snowflakes, but the short print where instead of Fernando Tatis wearing his chain, he's wearing the Christmas lights, Christmas lights as a necklace. I think that's up there as well as I believe Luis Robert has the candy cane bat. Yeah, that's a good one. And then I know there's like one with Will Ferrell as Elf in the background that I think I people kind of like. That exists. I forgot about that. But anyway, we don't need it. We we harp no, pretty. We need long. to go on a Will Ferrell binge because his 2015 Tops Archives cards, short prints, some of the most unappreciated cards in cardboard. I've owned a few of his Giants ones and I always flip them for more. But uh, that's a great set. I mean, yeah, I think our also, friend. You also flipped your first Jeffro Packbold 101. <laughs> I didn't. Or not Packbold. Wait, was it? No, it was Packbold, right? What are you talking about? My printing plate? The printing plate, plate yeah. My 05 Tops opening day printing plate of some random yeah. Angels picture? Random. Random. You can't uh, buy sentimental. It depends. I was thinking about that when I was putting together. So I bought six new binders from BCW mm -hmm. Supplies. Um, good binders. Pretty quality. Uh, they had a deal where you buy six and you get like 20% off or something your whole order. Which I realized when I got the package in is only because that's how many binders fit in like their standard box perfectly. So they mm -hmm. obviously want to incentivize people to buy that many. So it's a perfect fit in their box. But yeah. um, when I was putting them together, I was like thinking about like who I got a lot of the cards from and stuff. And I was like, I didn't really pull many of these cards at all that I have in my binders and that's okay. Um, but fuck you, Max. <laughs> well, <laughs> join the line, join the line, Tommy. Uh you, you graded a bunch, Max, and I want to hear. I The people always love when you crack and get higher grades and crack and get lower grades. That's how you, that's what, you, that's what the people love to see. They love to see the P, crack PSA 9 to PSA yeah. 7. I mean, I have a few cards on my desk that I have some grading examples of. Um, so I'm going to cover the grades. What do you think of the center? Can you see these well, Tommy? Can you tell me what I'm holding? Tommy, you're muted. Nice. I'm uh, I'm seeing Prism basketball sticker autos of Benedict Matherin. Looks like a mojo. And then I don't know who the other guy on your uh, Jade Ivy. Jade Ivy. What do you think of the centering of these cards? Again, I'm covering the grades for Tommy. I very rarely understand how Prism centering works. I those cards, the borders are so bizarre looking that I it's hard for me to even tell what would be centered. So, but do they look similar? That's my point. I don't want to give you. A I mean, relatively, I don't know. I'm terrible at centering, dude. You can't ask yeah. me this stuff. So this Ivy is a PSA 10. And this Benedict Matherin is a BGS 8 with a 7, with an with an 8 centering subgrade. So. Jeez. And 7 surface? Yeah. Well, it had a print line. That was my bad. So I'm going to probably crack the Matherin and, and disclose the print line. I'm not unethical. I'm probably underwater on the Matherin, but it doesn't matter. But um, so these, I've been grading a lot of these sensational signatures choice cards. Uh, Flip Life, by the way, I bought this raw for like 60 bucks and I just sold it for 225. So I'm king of the universe. But anyway, yeah, these are by design of the card, just, yeah, they're left heavy. They're left over right heavy. And every single card in this set is like this. It's just the design of the card. I don't think it's printing defect i think it's just me being incompetent because even if you look down directly you can see like the player's face is centered so tommy by his own admission and not knowing the grades beforehand um said that the centering was similar between the two and one psa 10 and the other got a eight centering grade which by my math usually indicates 70 30 so that just shows that beckett does not know the set um, another fun card, I guess. I'm holding my Ahmad Sauce, Sauce Gardner Cracked Ice Contenders Auto. I bought this raw. I PSA 9'd it, and then I PSA 10'd it. Which Let's is, go. Again, usually when it's like my own resubmitting, rather than like, like, all right, if you crack a 9 that someone else graded, sometimes you can like get a print line out or you, you had a fingerprint or something like that. But like when it's a card that I've already like prepped for myself and then it's crack and send out again, that really just demonstrates like the inconsistency. Yeah. 
Wait, so in the in the market, is optic contenders cracked ice worth more than paper contenders no. cracked ice autos? No, um, optic is worse. And the variation is also worse, especially this year when the variation is horizontal. So yours is an optic though, right? Mine is an optic cracked ice variation. Um, so this is kind, of, kind of the worst cracked ice contenders auto to own, basically? Yes, agreed. <laughs> um, this is a cool one. This is a luck of the lottery Shet Holmgren BGS 9.5 gold out of 10. Um, subbed it myself. It PSA 9 had a little surface mark, I think, like on the side there, which was just part of the printing. Sent it to Beckett and at 9.5 with a 9 surface grade. Um, when I'm sending stuff to Beckett, I usually try to go for non true gems because my. The kind of the rationale is that if I'm sending it and it's a true gem, then that probably was just a card I could have sent to PSA. So the recognition of the nine surface, if anything, just means that it's probably at its maximum grade, assuming that the error isn't preferable. But I think this is just a cool card. Yeah, I like I don't mind the the prism inserts. And I also like the golds when the on the Beckett labels, I just think they look a little nicer than the PSA labels that are red. Yeah, that's true. The gold on gold is kind of nice on this. I agree. I agree. And so you're, you're still subbing to Beckett. I, you're not just buying those. So the rationale with Beckett is like their, their values, like the 95 still commands value. It's just that they're so incompetent as a company. Like they have a $20 tier and they have a $40 tier. And I, genuinely no exaggeration believe that the $20 tier is at a four to six month turnaround time. And of course the premium that you get from a Beckett nine five is lower than the premium you get for a PSA 10. I know some people sub TCG and tops now in hopes of getting BGS 10 pristines of black labels because they they just come out of the factory very strong. So if I'm sending to Beckett, then the thinking is that it's a card that can't PSA 10, but at the same time, a card that is going to command enough of a premium as a nine to where it's worth it. I had, I'm going to close this anecdote real quick. I had a Benedict Matherin, our guy, man of the podcast, Benedict Matherin. I had a playoff contenders auto out of 99. I bought it for like 130 bucks. I PSA nined it and at nine, well, I guess he just said I PSA nined it. Um, I RCR'd it for 25 bucks and at nine five. At this time, like I think they shot up to like 200 bucks or something like that. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to encapsulate it. It's like going to be like a $400 card or whatever. I get it back in a month. By that time, they've like dropped back down to like 150 bucks raw. So that anticipated rise went back to normal. And all in all, I had to spend $20 to grade the PSA, $25 to Beckett RCR it, which may not have been the smart move to do. So we're at $45. And then I had to spend another $40 to encapsulate it with Beckett plus shipping. So before shipping, that's like $85 on a card that I sold for 300 and a card I bought raw for 130 or 140 or something like that. So in that situation, good example of a card that was not worth grading and ended up selling on eBay for $300 buy it now. So you did make money though. Maybe I don't want to do the math with how much the shipping costs, both sending to Beckett and sending out to eBay. And let's say I make the money from eBay and it's like 260 net plus $5 shipping. Plus it's, it's close to, a, it's so close to a wash. Yeah, and also like I sold my BGS nine five for like double the raw price, which is surprising. Like I got a very strong sale in the $300. Well, like you used to say a couple years ago, it's all about cash flow, right? So it doesn't yeah, even really matter. Yeah, man, it's all about just cash flow. <laughs> wait, wait, what was the point of that again? I feel like that was, I used to hear that all the time from people. You just have to keep moving it. You just have to get it, wash your hands, move on to the next one. But again, I'm, I'm probably just going to try to talk about this card one time on this podcast because I'm going to be talking about it so much in other mediums. My Jackson Holiday BGS 9.5 Gold Auto. Good example, great example of Beckett being worth it as the Matherin at a 99 contenders auto just highlighted where the juice was not worth a squeeze on this nine, five math on this nine, five Jackson holiday auto. I bought it as a PSA nine for about $5,000 before he got promoted to triple a, which means something. I send it out to PSA at PSA nine. So it's now a PSA nine for the second time. I bought it, at P bought it from eBay as a PSA nine. I send it to PSA 
for $330 and at PS nines again, I send it to Beckett for 40 bucks plus shipping, wait a month and at nine fives, no upcharges. Beckett is only about turnaround time. They do not care about your declared value. I think unless it's like extreme, but like $40, get it back in a month and at nine five, then now it's worth a few thousand dollars more than I paid. Which, I mean, if you skip the cracking and sending the PSA step, that's you're making a few thousand dollars off of 40 bucks. So, so Beckett doesn't do the upcharge like PSA does. That's kind right. of an interesting. No upcharge. You don't sub with SGC ever, right? I have subbed SGC, I believe, for exactly two cards. And in both of those situations, they were PSA 6s that looked better than PSA than a PSA 6. One of like one I bought as a PSA six, the other I did detective work and recognized it used to be a PSA six. And I sent it to SGC and they both SGC eight it. I feel like the SGC eight is like the most common grade I see. <laughs> like cards that are decent and like come out of like they're like nice looking, yeah. like you said, nice looking PSA sixes can be SGC eights all day. Yeah, and that was the strategy with that one. Well, Max, when you come to my stay at my crib for the spectacular in a few weeks. I'm excited for our little adventure we're going to do where we're going to figure out cards that I own that are like really rogue. Maybe yeah. they have been graded and see which ones we should send in just for the fuck of it. I bought, I brought up the story on the IMO Mitch episode, I believe episode one, but in 2020. So for everyone that, you know, obviously 1952 tops is a gum company. Then they start producing trading cards similar to Bowman in the forties tops. I think still has like, stops owns bazooka bubblegum still to this day and they i want to say like 20 to 30 percent of their yearly revenue is from bazooka gum i I think it's only 20 to 30 percent but they had a contest in 2020 uh around tops big league and it was something like you had to just comment on the post or something like that and i won the contest or i was like one of five winners or something like that and you what did you win I'll get on to this. I won like a big, like I won maybe like this is in 2020. We won maybe like 500 pieces of bazooka bubble gum, a tops big league collector's edition with like the figurine in it. And I won a special promotional pack of like 10 cards with the bazooka bubble gum characters on it, which to my knowledge had never been printed anywhere else. So I have a card with just like bazooka Joe on it. And like a few of the other characters. And I really wanted to sub them to PSA to just make them pop ones. But I just like, they're in a pile somewhere and I just keep forgetting. And all that other blah, Wait, blah, blah. Wait, dude, stuff. find that card and send me a picture of it. That's sick. I have pictures of it. That's so sick. All right, I'm reading right now. It looks like, it looks like Bazooka was sold. I don't and know. it's no what longer it was. part of Tops. Okay, well, circa 2020 it was. Yeah, no, I know historically. And like 2003, 2004, they have those bazooka sets that are pretty cool. I'm kind of bummed they don't have those anymore, honestly. Those sets were cooler than like Big League. Big League should be called like bazooka. It's like they did so much for that 2003 draft class that kind of taints it a little bit. But at the same time, you have to respect the marketing and how they did it way more than how they do it now. Yeah, like Tops Matrix, I think is Tops Bazooka a one year offset? No, they did two years, I believe. They also did it for baseball, though. There's Bazooka, like Yadi Molina has some cool rookies from Bazooka, yeah. right? It is. It's he cool. has that color match red parallel Bazooka rookie. That's like probably what I would consider his Yadi's coolest rookie card. Hmm. Well, Max, I think hmm. it's time. I think it's time. I think it's time for what what we like to do. Are we talking about I'm eBay? Let you go first. I've been going first. So you yeah. you go first. eBay buys and then obviously eBay, card eBay max. Talk about, talk about your have, sales team. Have been I again, I wasn't fibbing when I was talking about being in this buying conundrum. I only have two eBay buys in the past week. I don't even have a top five. I have two. And actually, no, one of them is in hand, which is cool. And I will try finding it. But actually, no, I just found it. The first is I won this at auction. I am I talk the talk and I walk the walk when I say that I like Shohei Otani as a buy. I bought this 2018 
PSA 10 Shohei Otani US 1 Super Short Print. I want it for $1,700. That's probably the same price this was worth in last year's preseason, which is just way too low. Way too low. This is a good card. Yeah, especially if he changes teams, goes to some big team, and like any iota of good news. It's like, oh, are you you know are you selling below? It's like, no, I'll buy. I'll be the comp that's buying the rare. You have to buy the rare Otani stuff, and that's why we've had a love hate relationship, mostly hate relationship with autographs on this podcast. I respect the rare cards. A blue auto to one fifty is just as rare as a blue non auto out of 150 and you can your money can stretch so much farther by just getting an orange out of 25 or a gold out of 50 instead of the blue auto out of 150 obviously i'm not not specific to otani so i will prioritize the rare cards and i'm glad to own i owned this in a psa 9 previously i bought this as a psa 10 this is a cool card i'll stand by that that's a sick one my second buy of the week is an Erling Holland PSA 9 Speckle Refractor. Um, I remember owning the Ansu Fati of this card. And what year? Made, what year? Uh, 2019 Tops Grow. Um, I know fan of the podcast Saul's favorite remark is that I know along with Eddie and Renee also championed this, that in every one of my PSA subs, I have at least one Erling Holland Sapphire. Usually it's a Sapphire, but I own at least one Erling Holland Sapphire. I think I've gemmed that card four or five times now. I have another one that's set to go out of my next sub, and this time I'd figured I'd uh, mix things up with a Speckle Refractor. So it's out there right now at PSA? Uh, it is incoming to me from eBay. Okay, okay. Well, what what did you... So you had two buys. Those are, those are pretty solid buys, though, you know? Like, qual- quality over quantity. Quality over quantity, I'm finding less stuff to bid on, which is not fun. Um, recent sales have been my the aforementioned Benedict Mathur 9.5 Contenders Ticket Auto for 300 The Adolis Garcia First Bowman Papers, flip of the century, bought those at the National for $0.25 cents each, sold them on eBay for $3 each. That's like, that's literally $3 to $30. That's like, that is a true, like, dollar challenge okay it's like you can't then like if you started with four of those at 25 cents and you flipped them for you know what would that be 12 dollars and the minus fees and minus the envelopes it's like that's the true like you can't say that i left the slums yet i will put in my work to make sure that i sell cars of every denomination from three dollars to three thousand dollars and maybe one day if i'm lucky thirty thousand dollars but i go everywhere Never say Max runs from the grind. He does not run from the grind. Um, I sold all of I sold the remaining, I believe I had five left of my PSA 9 2021 tops. Excuse me, not tops. 2021 uh Pokemon Celebration Charizard Metal Cards. I graded a ton of them two years ago, or I bought them to grade two years ago. I graded them actually like Last time I was with Tommy, the Chicago Spectacular, I think was when I got them back, something like that. And my Pikachu 10, and I was pumped. Actually, no, I got them back at like the National. But I offloaded the rest of my PSA 9s, and that has been a bittersweet. I'm glad to get rid of them. Um, some random cards in between. I sold a Cattell Marte Stadium Club 2016 rookie for $2.30. I sold a Slade Caldwell Stars and Stripes Rookie Auto Relic for $12.49. Sold a Richard Urena 2018 Diamond Kings Dual Materials Relic for $2.99. And last but not least, I sold a Cade Otten 2022 Donruss Elite Rookie out of $9.99 for $2.99. I don't run away from the grind. Those are just eBay sales. I don't run away from the grind. No. You're wild. Uh, did you have any off eBay sales? Yes, I did. I'm going to have to remember. Here, what I'll, I'll do my first. turn. I'll do my turn and then you. you, do your you turn. Know. All right. So I, I went, you know, I've been really locked in on eBay these days. I feel like I really know what I'm doing. Feeling good about it. I bought a 1991 Ziploc Peanuts nine card complete set uh, where it has all the characters of Peanuts are playing baseball. 
in these cards, and I guess they were in Ziploc bags, boxes, or something. I was about to say, explain that. <laughs> uh, they're Ziploc cards. I don't know. I bought them last night. Might have taken an edible before buying them. But I bought it for $10 plus $5 shipping. It seems like the Charlie Brown from that set sells for like $10. Bucks. Um, get the complete set. Nice nine-card set. You know I love a nine-card set. You get the perfect binder page. Uh, so that'll be fun. I'll, you know, well, I'll do a little more digging on where that came from, but, uh, he's Charlie Brown doesn't have that many cards. Uh, just, just throwing that out there to people. If you're interested in the, the sort of non-sports card world, though, most of his cards are him playing baseball, arguably sports cards. Uh, I bought a Patty Fisher, the best linebacker in Northwestern history. Prism draft picks gold at a 10 for $5 plus $1 shipping, so like $7 basically. You know, Gaby Card Sacks has really had me motivated to get the gold out of 10 Prism draft picks cards of my guys. Um, and then I bought a 2008 Topps Chrome Dustin Pedroia Gold Cup Blue Refractor. The 2008 Blue Refractors don't come up that often for Topps Chrome. Uh, and I got that for $430 plus $1.50 shipping, which, I don't know, I was ready to pay 10 bucks for that card. The Red Sox fans love Pedroia. They he never has these 2008 Topps Chrome cards come up very often, so that was kind of a cool one for the binder. And then Max, I bought a Dusty Baker 2003 Black out of 53 first year of Topps Black parallels, as we've talked about. Dusty Baker, I bought this before he retired for twenty two dollars plus four dollars shipping, so a little under thirty dollars total. I was hyped about that just because Dusty Baker legend of baseball giants manager for this is his only tops paper parallel as a manager of the giants i believe um and it's obviously first year black hyped about that one that'll be a sweet one to have for a while and then yeah that's kind of where i've been at oh the giants have a the giants mascot is lou lucille and he never has cards. For some reason, he's one of those mascots that does not get put into opening day or one of any of those other weird sets. But he does have a 2007 opening day gold at a 2007 card that I got for 99 cents plus 63 dollars, 63 cents shipping. I like those. Has that been? A, was that a ridiculous enough round of cards that I just spewed off there, Max? That was a productive week. Uh, do you want to see? I am actually auctioning two cards on eBay right now, Max. Okay. Tell me. <laughs> uh, after I went on my little eBay splurge, uh, I decided I went through my boxes. I was like, I, I picked out two cards that I know would have high volume of people looking for them and mm -hmm. are cards that I literally just never take out. You know, I think I can get similar cards in the future. One is a 1965 Tops Joe Morgan rookie PSA 5 that I got in Cooperstown last year. Um, I did not pay for that card, though, in Cooperstown. That was a Brian Ludden gift. Uh, so I decided that, you know, I can buy a PSA five Joe Morgan rookie card in the future if I want, but I also had rather own a PSA five, like gold cup of him. So that's on auction right now. It's at $42, 16 watchers, eight bids excited. We'll see where that ends up. And then I had last year or two years ago, two years ago now. Wow. I feel old. Um, I bought a Willie Mays autograph PSA certified from my card, local to card shop. Uh, I think I got it for like 60, 70 bucks because it's super faded. The auto is incredibly faded, but it is PSA certified. Uh, so I had, threw that up on auction. It has five watchers, 11 bids at $46 right now, 74 views. Figure any Willie Mays autograph that's certified by PSA got to have a lot of eyeballs on it. And the autograph is just so faded. It's like, why do I own this? I don't need to own this card. I don't even really like autograph cards. I'd rather own like some cooler willie mays vintage cards so those are ending tomorrow night i'll see see what the deal is but you know i love the seven day auctions historically i have done this frequently to just liquidate cards i'm gonna tell you a secret that of i'm course. broadcasting to an entire podcast i went to the 10 day auction not the seven day auction on my josh young what does that what does that do for you uh i figured three extra days of exposure is it is it more expensive to do that though? I don't think so. And if it is, it's like ten cents. I don't know if they still make it ten cents. I know for a while, like eBay, it didn't like for the longest time, eBay didn't charge you to schedule your listings. But 
then they made it to where like if you wanted to schedule your listing it cost 10 cents per listing and i think that they did the same thing with 10 day auctions and i just remember thinking that that is just like the dumbest fee in the world and i like refused to pay it not out of 10 cents which is a lot of cents but out of principle hey the 10 cents adds up to burritos every once in a while the 25 cents to three dollars does too <laughs> i got right, a book so it's dreaded it's halloween yeah tonight's gonna be a night uh what were your well, what, one were of your, us. what were your off ebay off ebay sales so i will highlight uh i guess five of them the again one i talked about before was the Jaden ivy red choice prism psa 10 auto that was a nice 60 dollar buy raw send it to grading for 20 bucks in the meantime, the raw became a hundred dollar card, and then I sold it for two hundred twenty five dollars. So that was a nice one there. That's a few burritos. I sold a Nikola Jokic silver PSA nine for six hundred fifty dollars. I sold a PSA nine twenty twenty tops opening day Juan Soto short print. Sold that for two hundred seventy five dollars. I sold a Patrick Mahomes PSA nine optic rookie for eight hundred twenty five dollars. And last but not least, which is probably the coolest of the bunch. I think I talked about my Burke Ross last week, so I'll ignore that. But I sold my PSA 3 T206 Rube Waddell portrait. Um, I paid above comps on it. I sold it to a collector who know, also knows that he paid strong on it. It's a gorgeous PSA 3. It's a PWCC A top 30%. And that's probably the coolest card that I will miss the most of those five. And the only vintage card mentioned really by you this whole podcast. That is correct. Are you grading vintage these days? Or they, they don't seem to be in any of your subs. So I figured I've not. never graded a vintage card in my life. I don't know the difference between a two and a three. I can sometimes get the difference between a one and a two. I, I view it in a subjective lens when, when you're grading, you have to look at it in a quantitative lens. And I don't know the proper way to note it, the flaws quantitatively in order to That's ascertain fair. a certain grade. That's fair. Well, Max, episode 69, man. They never, they, they didn't think we were going to make it this far. Yeah. People disrespect the consistency. And this is ironic because we didn't have an episode last week. The consistency it takes in order to produce an episode like this. I am so blessed and grateful to have a co-host and producer like television sports cards, TV sports cards, and I'm ready for another 69 more. I echo all your sentiments, Max. It's absolutely a pleasure. And when I go back and make the clips, it's just like I'm talking to you again. You're living rent-free in my head all the time. Yeah. Episode 69. Again, join the line. How many episodes until episode 420? We'll see. A year and a half. Half a, a year. year. Half a year. Uh, but yeah, we got some fun stuff in the works. Uh, you know, this is a podcast. This is a collecting podcast, Max, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, it is. As, as always, hit us up during the week. Let me know if you have a Topps holiday card that you think is sick. Uh, I don't know why they're releasing it in October, Max. Jackson holiday is not a holiday. Jackson Holiday, what Jackson Holiday Holiday rookies might be the all time most holidays card. in a single card. Jalen Williams. <laughs> all right, Max, what's your parting words for people? When it's a clock o'clock, you can't press the snooze button. <laughs>